Okay, welcome to lecture two of MSC 6765, uh, Mechanical Behavior of Materials. Uh, this part, we're doing a really brief overview of some fundamental continuum mechanics concepts. So we're going to start with uh, stress and derive what we mean by the stress tensor. Um, a little bit different than perhaps some of you are used to as a 1D stress strain uh, from your undergrad. We're also going to look at kinematics um, and how we describe deformation of material and use that to derive a uh, strain tensor that we're going to be using. Um, so let's start with stress and we're going to break this up into a couple different uh, um, concepts and a couple different uh, short videos. So let's start with, I say that a lot, I say so or here or uh, so up, I did it right there. Um, I'm going to um, 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 lots of interjections in my uh, videos so I apologize for all that. Let's begin. So body and surface forces. So we know that stress is a measure of the force intensity in a material, right? It has the same units of pressure, force per unit area. Uh, so stress is the the stress the force intensity at some material point within a body. What do we mean by a stress-free body then? So a stress-free body is going to be that the only forces present are the interatomic forces necessary to keep the body together. So we can think about this as if we take a body that's stress-free and cut it um, anywhere along any arbitrary plane, there should be no acceleration of any part of the body, right? So force equals ma. We shouldn't see any spring back. None of the parts of the body should move relative to each other uh, just simply by cutting it. We're going to be most interested in stresses due to internal or external forces or displacements. And we're going to break these down into two big areas. Body force. These are forces like gravity or um, the electromagnetic force, which act on all the volume elements of the body. Um, and so this is a force either per unit volume or force per unit mass uh, acting on the body. Surface forces right, are, are mechanical loads. These are forces which act on the internal or external surfaces uh, in the body, right? And they have units of, um, it's, we're going to be considering stress or force per unit, uh, per unit area. Okay, body forces. So let's consider we have some material body, which we denote by uh, B and it has some volume V, and it's enclosed by some surface S, and it sits in real space somewhere. So if we have a material point, we'll call it P here in this uh, diagram, the, uh, this point P has a, a, a differential mass and a differential volume, delta V and delta M. Uh, associated with it. So we know what the density is. The density is the the mass and the volume over the mass divided by the volume. Uh, as delta V goes to zero, we get a true differential. So dm by dV is the point density. Um, and the conversion between the forces per unit mass and the forces per unit volume uh, is just the, the local density. So our density is uh, our, our scaling relationship between the two descriptions of body forces. And we don't need to worry 
much about body forces. They're not going to come up um, very much in what we're going to be talking about. Like I said before, we're going to be talking about mostly mechanical forces and mechanical interactions. So now we get down to the concept of stress. So let's take our body B and there's some arbitrary distribution of surface forces here. There's loads pointing in all kinds of different directions. Uh, but we, we don't care what they are at the moment. But there's some distribution of them. So if we think about our point P, let's make a define some interior surface, interior plane through this body that contains point P. And then let's make an imaginary cut uh, on this plane. So we're going to section our body like this. So we define that stress by that plane by its normal, the, the point and the normal. And if we make this imaginary cut and we took half the body away, if there was forces acting on point P, uh, if we make this cut, it would not be, the body would not be in equilibrium anymore. So we have to apply imaginary a new set of imaginary tractions onto this surface S to maintain our equilibrium, our, our, our force balance and our moment and our moment balance. Um, and so what the, we define the Cauchy stresses is let's shrink this surface to an infinitesimal surface at point P. And we say that the, the moments, the net moment per unit area has to be zero. So our body's not rotating. And the forces acting at that point, we're going to call a traction vector. And what's important to realize here is that if I make a cut on a different surface, going through point P, I'd have a different traction vector, right? So I, it's not enough just to describe the force at point P. I need something that can describe the force acting on any arbitrary surface that goes through point P. And that object is what we call the stress tensor. And the force acting on that arbitrary surface is the traction vector. Sometimes you'll see it referred to as a stress vector. Um, in part two, I'm going to derive the stress tensor um, and, uh, and uh, describe it a little bit more. Uh, but right now, we want to think about how do we interpret this. So we often describe the stress tensor pictorially by this image, right? So we've got a infinitesimally small cube with three faces, one parallel, one perpendicular to x1, one perpendicular to x2, one perpendicular to x3. And we show three stress components on each of these faces. So a normal component, which gives the, the portion of the traction vector on this surface that is parallel with the axis or orthogonal to the this cut surface and two that lie in the plane that we call our shear stresses or shear tractions right so each one uh, each face has this so we interpret sigma 1 1 as the force on the on this on the one surface in the one direction 
Sigma 1, 2 is the force on the 1 surface in the 2 direction. Sigma 1, 3 is the force on the 1 surface in the 3 directions. Um, and as, we, as we'll describe, right, we can compute these tractions as a projection. Right? On any arbitrary surface, right, if I make a plane uh, along the body diagonal, the forces, I can, I can compute the forces on that plane by projecting the forces from these three orthogonal faces onto that plane and resolving. Alright, so we'll re rewrite this in a slightly different way once we discuss stress equilibrium um, and the symmetry of the stress tensor. But for right now, our tractions are computed by the left multiplication of the, this tangent, the, I said that wrong, I'm sorry. Left multiplication of the transpose of this normal vector, so this is really uh, a row vector, not a column vector as I, I wrote it here, times our, our stress. And we'll write this in a slightly more convenient way once we describe the symmetry, uh, derive what the symmetry of the stress tensor or the Cauchy stress tensor should be, uh, which is will be part three of this, um, and I will get to that in just a moment. Um, an example that we will work in class, and I will stop here and we'll talk about transformations of stress, uh, principal stresses and principal directions, um, invariance of the stress, deviatoric and hydrostatic stress, and other some other stress definitions uh, coming up. And then we'll also have a little bit of a lecture on a review of eigenvectors and eigenvalues before we get to... Uh, kinematics and strain. Okay, thanks.